So he had to memorize two phrases in Ukrainian and Russian, don't shoot and I am American. Former NCAA basketball star Maurice Mo Creek had no idea that when he signed with the Ukrainian Men's Basketball Super League that a Russian invasion was actually on the horizon. In just three months after signing his contract, Creek was at a crossroads. He says the league downplayed the conflict and gave him an ultimatum, stay to play or leave and not get paid. His mom begged him to flee. Clearly, mom got her wish, meeting him for an emotional reunion at the airport, as you can see right there in Maryland last week. Mo Creek and his parents, Pammy and Mike Morgan, joining us now with the details of this harrowing journey. Hi, guys. Good to see you. Hi. Thanks for having us. Oh, yeah, and I can see Pammy's holding on to Mo tight. Dad's making sure <laughs> nobody's leaving the room. I can see it all. All right, Mo, before we just get to how you guys finally got back together, you spent two days in and out of this bomb shelter, I am told, in, in Mikolov. What was going through your mind? Here you were thinking, hey, I'm going to be playing ball, you know, across Europe. The next thing you know, you're in a bomb shelter. I was terrified. Um, it was scary. And um, every moment of it, I'm just thinking, like, how can I get out of Ukraine uh, for my life and to see my family, my friends, and, you know, just have everybody that was praying for me and everything just know that I'm safe and sound. You actually traveled, I understand, 130 miles from Mikolov to Odessa before crossing the border into Moldova, where you were there for nine hours standing in line. And then you finally made it to Romania, where you were able to catch that flight to get back home to Maryland. What stands out to you the most as you were making that journey? Um, having to do all that to go home. <laughs> I think that nine hours of just standing still in that line and looking at everybody else trying to get out just as much as I am um, stood out to me the most. I mean, they had food and drinks out there uh, for everybody, um, just trying to be uh, a company to them. But just to be out there that long, I still was a part of Ukraine, so I still was being fearful of my life. Were your teammates saying anything to you, Mo? Like, oh man, you have no idea, you know, what's about to go down. I mean, what were they saying to you? I think everybody was just scared. So everybody was just attentive to their families. And um, I was the same way with mine. Um, we have a group chat in Viber where we talk to each other and try to accompany each other at times in need. But at the same time, we just, I know everybody's worried about their own. And, you know, we're not mad at that. When we get to each other, we get to each other. Wow. So I love that your first phone call was to mom once you crossed the border. So, Pammy, tell me about getting that phone call. He said, Mom, I'm free. I'm free. That's all I heard and saw in our chat. So I was so happy, but he still wasn't at peace, it wasn't still a release because he still was not on United States soil. Right. But it was a great feeling just to know that he was, for the most part, out of harm's way. Okay, and Dad, you gotta chime in here. How were you keeping mom calm? You know, what were your conversations to your son? There had to have been so much going through your mind. I can see it in all three of your faces right now. <laughs> yes, you know, I was crying. I mean, cry, yay. <laughs> but, good, good. I love it. And massages and telling her to keep calm. So, Mo, how did you finally strike a deal with the league and 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 get enough money to get out of there? Because I know they were really putting pressure on you. How did you finally negotiate something with them so you could just at least get some of the money that you had already earned? Well, um, I had to talk to my agent about that a lot. Um, you know, after playing a couple of games and having to go through practices twice a day, once a day sometimes, and you know, I, I, I said, I can't go away with nothing. You know, I have to be able to come away with something just to be able to do stuff that I need to do to get out. So we had to come to negotiation in terms. 
and uh, get our get my LOC just in case I do have to go and play somewhere else. But um, all that has to come into terms, and I think that was the fair thing to do. You know, I'm I put my my body on the line for these guys every day. I, I do the best that I can every day to win basketball games. I think the best thing that they could have done was honor the contract to some point in standard, and you know, just get me out of it as safe as time. Absolutely. And, you know, you have a you, you have a platform right now here with me. You know, how would you like to lift up your former teammates, uh, especially the the Ukrainians? I mean, they are such resilient people. What do you think of the fact that they're you know, so many of them are staying to, to fight off the Russians? I mean, how are you how have you been inspired by some of your cr Ukrainian friends that you met and spent time with? Well, I just. They're, they're some of the most bravest people I know. You know, not a lot of people can go and say, like, hey, I'm about to fight for my country, you know. And there's 11 of those guys that was on my team, but I know 80% of the league. And 80% got to sit there and fight because they're within the, the age range of 18 through 65. And right. to all those guys, I, I'm just praying for them. I'm just praying for their families and everything that – um, they are okay because I'm I'm sitting here and watch it every day. You know, just having to sit back home and watch how everything is just getting bombed down and shot down and everything like that. I'm scared for them. I'm actually scared for everybody in Ukraine, honestly. Yeah, it's humbling. And finally, Pammy, I think you should become your son's new agent. And what team here in the United States are you going to try and negotiate a deal? Because I know you want him to stay home. <laughs> yes. Um, we're working on it, but we would love to have him in town. Um, but then there's also things too. I mean, he does still have a lot of basketball left in him to play. Um, that is one of the, um, things that, I mean, his spirit down to his bone marrow is just basketball. Um, of course. but you know, he wants to do a book. He wants to do a movie about this. And it's something that people need to hear and they need to see. But when it comes to basketball, there are some things we're looking at. But, yeah, we would definitely like to keep him home. All right. Well, we're going to keep an eye on all three of you. Meanwhile, Dad, you let me know when you open up your spa and I'll send everybody your way. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> love it. <laughs> Pammy, Mike, Mo, love you guys. We'll be following you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you for having Thank us. You, <laughs> you bet. That was definitely a slam dunk. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.